if you're a young person watching this, this is leadership. This is patriotism. This is what it means to put the country first and put the party first and put the cause first. When your arm gets tired, you let somebody else finish pitching the game. That's what Joe Biden has done, and he's done that for all of us. Boys, get everybody. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. SBJ! Kick the beat. The last few weeks have been crazy for this presidential campaign. I've never seen anything like it. Donald Trump had a situation where gunshots! almost got assassinated. A few days later, a current president who beat Donald Trump says he's no longer gonna run for president. And this is all crazy to me, but he wasn't doing so well in the rematch. And that was clearly evident according to Van Jones. And this is, this is the difference between uh, a, a politician and a leader. Uh, he, 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 he made a selfless decision and people are heartbroken. Even people who are pushing for this to happen, it's kind of like, like when, when, you're, when your grandpa, you gotta take the keys. And everybody, you gotta take his keys, you gotta take his keys. You gotta, and, 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 and he's fighting and he's fighting and everybody's so frustrated. And then you finally get the keys back. And then you just cry. Because this is somebody that you love. This is somebody that you care about. This is somebody who was there for you. This is somebody, you wouldn't be here without him. And you had to take something from him. Now, this is not, look, this politics is politics. But this is a human moment for one of the great humans in America. This is a huge moment for him, for his family, for all of us who love him, for all of us who wanted him to get across the finish line. But if you're a young person watching this, this is leadership. This is patriotism. This is what it means to put the country first and put the party first and put the cause first. When your arm gets tired, you let somebody else finish pitching the game. That's what Joe Biden has done, and he's done that for all of us. So who else would it be? No one knows. We didn't even think that Joe Biden would endorse his own vice president, which has happened before. I mean, look at what's going on with Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Mike Pence was the former vice president. He don't even want to deal with Trump anymore. So it's not uncommon that Joe Biden would endorse Kamala Harris. Even Barack Obama didn't want to endorse Kamala Harris. But stop the show. But something strange is going on. While there are a lot of ladies out there happy for Kamala Harris, there are a lot of ladies who are not. There are tweets going around talking about if a woman becomes president, they're leaving the country. And it's not men that's saying that, that's a woman saying that. But the most interesting comment that I've heard so far has been from social media content creator Charleston White. Here are his reasons why he doesn't want Kamala Harris being the president. Man, man, they got me. Up. I wouldn't dare vote for no black. Now that man, man, listen, I was raised by black women. I got a grandmother. I got black sisters, but I wouldn't dare put no black woman in no mother position of the White House, the commander in chief of the military, a black woman. Not only that, a mixed black married to a white man. Her pH balance is way off with that white. Man, you can't make me believe. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Man, Kamala Harris got a white boy. Her pH balance it off and her mental instability got to be off. A hoe would have thrown off pH balance unless she's sneaking and f***ing a n***. Now, if she's sneaking and f***ing a n***, then we might can let her be vice president. But we, there's no way. America, I'd rather for black people to go back to slavery than let a black woman run this goddamn country. Don't do it. Jay, listen, man, I'm against anything with a black woman running. Sh Motherfucker, get your ass back in that bedroom and in the kitchen. But the White House, America, we can't do this here now. Hell no, hell no. I'd rather have another mother civil war before we let a run this mother. Got me fed up. Go back and get Barack, if anything. Find another mixed baby. But don't put no in there. Those opinions are his own, but it could be some people who feel like that. Kamala Harris is half Jamaican, half Indian. She's also married to a white guy, none of which I give a damn about, right? That doesn't matter to me. She also went to Howard University, which is an HBCU. That also doesn't matter, although it wouldn't matter if she had the right perspective, but she doesn't. This nine second video is all that I care about. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people, no. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. 
You see, the one thing that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have in common is that they don't want to give black people anything because neither one of them have any real ties to the black community. Kamala Harris went to Howard University. Kamala Harris might talk hip here and there. But the reality is, is that Kamala Harris is on task with Biden but keeping things going as they are. That's right. Kamala Harris doesn't give a damn about the African-American community. Do you support reparations for black people? Well, listen, again, we had over 200 years of slavery. We had Jim Crow for almost a, a, a century. We had legalized discrimination, segregation, and now we have it, it, segregation and discrimination that is not legal but still exists and is a barrier to progress. We have disparities around housing. We have disparities around education. We have disparities around income. And we have to recognize that everybody did not start out on an equal footing in this country and in particular black people have not and so we have got to recognize that and do something about that and give folks a lift up that's why for example i'm proposing the lift act give people who are making a hundred thousand dollars or less as a family a tax credit which will benefit and uplift 60 percent of black families who are in poverty so by default, it affects black families, but there's not a particular policy for African-Americans that you would explore. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole in the country. That is exactly why Kamala Harris equals Joe Biden. You're going to see things that are going to hurt the African-American community. More migration, okay? Your cities like black Chicago, your cities like New York City, Denver, Boston are going to continue to be overrun with immigrants or migrants and taxpayers will have to pay for that. What communities will these migrants come to? They're going to come to Chicago. They're going to come to Boston. They're going to come to, to New York, the, the, the places where African-Americans live at. And they're going to come and live in their communities. And then they're going to be there to replace them in the future to take their jobs. That's what we're going to see. But what else are we going to see? No air soul reparations. Kamala Harris doesn't feel that she owes the black community anything. And she could be right in her assessment because, hey, she's Jamaican and Indian, not African American. She doesn't feel like she owes anybody anything. So to me, I don't care about her being married to a white man. I don't care about anything else than that. I care about that where she stands on reparations in the current black community, she doesn't care and then blacks will still be overlooked. That is exactly why black people don't need to vote for Kamala Harris. She doesn't want to give you reparations. She doesn't talk about HBCU funding. This is what Donald Trump talked about in the past, okay? In the past. Since I signed the executive order establishing this initiative in my administration, we have made great strides in strengthening HBCUs, a cherished and vital institution in our country. Very important. I'm proud to say that my budget continues America's commitment to helping HBCUs improve their competitiveness, requesting more than a half a billion dollars for HBCU-focused programs. Further, the recent budget deal allows for the forgiveness of any outstanding loans owed under the HBCU Hurricane Supplement Loan Program, which was a very difficult task, and it worked out. I'm also pleased that our expansion of the Pell Grant eligibility will greatly help the many students attending our wonderful HBCUs. Now, I do understand the racialized bigots on the right. Yes, you have your sometimes non-black bigots. 
your Andrew Tates, your Sneakos, your Myrons from Fresh and Fit, your Candace Owens. I get it 100%. But I'd rather vote for Trump and deal with racial bigots than to vote for Kamala Harris, who pretends to be down and she isn't. That's the reality, she isn't. And most Americans are looking at it from that perspective, especially in the black community. How much longer are our communities gonna to continue to be disintegrated and failing? A lot of our uh, democratic cities that we have in black America, look at them, Baltimore. Look at the educational system. Look at how the students there are failing in math. Look at it in black Philadelphia. It's laughable. Look at it in Atlanta. We already know what's going on in Jackson, Mississippi. It's all terrible. None of this is going to be producing a good quality of life for the African-American youth or currently what's happening for the adult black American community or the hashtag FBA. The Democrats have turned it into a joke. Some of your dirtiest cities, I believe out of all the top dirtiest cities in America, all of them are ran by Democrats, including Houston, Texas, one of the best and thriving economies in today's market. Look at black Chicago with Brandon Johnson. Look at some of your smaller cities like Dalton, Illinois. They have all of this language that sounds good, but there are no tangibles for the African-American hashtag FBA, hashtag ADOS community. To me, it wouldn't matter who she was married to. She could be married to an alien for all I care. She could be a man or a female. I don't care about any of that. If you have something that you want to give to the African-American community to gain their vote, you should come out and say that. But they don't want to give anything to the African-American community for their vote because they believe they deserve their vote because blacks always give them their vote. There's nothing that they're gonna give you but the Latinos can force them to come to the table with something. The LGBTQ, these other groups, why should we be any different? But we are different and we're not respected. I do not want to waste my time voting for a political party who doesn't respect my culture, who doesn't respect the things that my people have went through. I will not accept that and cannot accept that. So guys, what do you think it's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson? Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Drunk. I appreciate you for all you do, Scar the Bell. We're out.